Hello, this is Brother Kevin. I'd like to welcome you back to Reformation and Revival Now. Uh, please pray for Sultana and I because we are now, uh, with every day that passes, adding to our studio and getting more acquainted with it. i got to get an education because I don't know really anything about filming. But keep us lifted up in prayer. I would like to continue on the theme I've been concentrating on, the unction of the Spirit, the primary way that we are led. Now, that does not dismiss the fact that very often we are led by uh, the Holy Spirit giving us visions and dreams um, or special gifts of the Spirit. But from day to day, the primary way that we are led by the Spirit is, I would have to say, really 80% of the time, maybe even higher than that for most of us, is through the unction of the Spirit. And I have a reason for saying that. And I want to go now to um, John's Gospel. Not John's Gospel, I'm sorry. The first epistle of John, and I want to go back to chapter 2 and verse 20. And I'm reading out of the King James Version. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. And in this going on 27, it says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as ye even as it has taught you so well ye shall abide in him and now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we may have confidence and be not ashamed at his coming now this is the primary way that we are led this is the primary way that we have discernment this is the primary way that we move about in our relationships we shouldn't just treat anybody any way that we think. We really should allow the Holy Spirit to lead us into brotherly love, to make us kind and tenderhearted, forgiving each other, forbearing one another in love. And if you are serious about following the Holy Spirit, as I said in the last video, you're going to have to look at two major responsibilities. One, you need to know your scriptures, know your Bible. The second thing, follow the unction of the Spirit. Forget about the fact that you'll make mistakes. Of course you will. But as you grow in the Word, as in doing the Word, the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved, a workman unto God that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. So this is important. We must do this. But if you don't do the Word, if you don't do what you're studying, James said you'll be deceived. He says it is the hearers of the word that ended up end up being self-deceived. We don't want to be self-deceived. You want to study the word, but you want to do what it says. Jesus says in the seventh chapter of John's gospel, he that does is a doer of my father's will will know of the doctrine that I teach. So if we become doers of the word, Jesus is going to teach us by the unction, by the anointing which we have received. Who received? We received when we became Christians, when we gave our lives to Jesus, when we turned from our sins and submitted our lives to Christ, regardless of what your, your denominational culture is. When you receive Christ, you received an unction. And an unction that's in you, he teaches you all things. He teaches you the truth. He leads you. It doesn't mean that you don't need Bible teachers or pastors or men and women of God to help you, Bible school teachers, so forth. But those people need to be anointed too. They need to have God's unction too. They need to be born again too. I mean, those of us, when we use the term born again, what we're really saying is, is that you are now in the spirit. You are spiritually in God's family because you've received part of him into yourself. You have a Jesus-like brand, a Jesus-like brand of spirit in you, making you his child. So righteousness is not just good deeds, and it should be. But righteousness is transformation that comes by receiving Jesus Christ coming into you. And when you have received that, the unction comes with that, which will lead you to all truth. So two things, doing that word and following the leading or the anointing of the Spirit inside of you. Now, I said I would give some examples of, of my wife. My wife had the same thing happen to her. She just had a burden for her community, and the Lord began to give her 
a prophetic word and begin to share with her. Now, an angel didn't appear to her and no man of God prayed for her, a woman of God prayed for her. She just received right from the inside of her something that formed the communications or a word to her and she had to write it down. And God told her to put on these people's banquets. And do you know she's done like three herself. There's been six in all. And do you know she did them with no money? And these, the first two particularly, were so expensive. They were $15,000 and $20,000 a piece. And I tell you, you can do anything that the Holy Spirit tells you you can do. This is why we need to be led by the Spirit. Well, that's pretty dramatic, you know, the People's Bank. Well, sure, that's dramatic. But the Holy Spirit will teach you how to treat your wife. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to treat your children. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to submit to your boss, so long as it's, you know, it's, it's in righteousness. The unction of the Spirit will teach you how to be last and how to put your brother or your sister, sometimes even your enemy, first. The unction of the Spirit will give you the ability to act like Jesus and have the same heart that he has. This doesn't mean that you never have to contest with the human part of your, the human faculties of your flesh, but it means that now that you are of the spirit, you are no longer a slave. You can be led 24 hours a day of the spirit. Sometimes I can be disobedient or disobedient to the spirit, but he's always there to lead me if I want to be led. So if I want to submit to him, he's there because I received him when I got born again. Way back there in the in the 70s, when I got saved, Jesus came into my life. Now, he had spoken to me earlier when I was a younger kid, but he had come into my life where he began to abide in me forever, with me forever. This is Ezekiel 36, 26, a new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will place within you. I will take the stony heart out of your flesh. And give you a new heart of flesh. Now, just a second now. I got something on my screen to take care of. Anyway. This is what it means to be led by the spirit. It's not that it's mystical. It's part of your spiritual anatomy. You have a new heart. You have a new spirit. What for? To have fellowship with God. So an unction of the spirit to have that. And to be led by that anointing. Is really spiritually natural. You should be hearing from God. You should be led by the Spirit. It is natural for you. What if I told you that it's more unnatural for you not to hear God than it is to hear Him? It's more natural for you to hear the Spirit or be led by the Spirit than to not to. Because by nature, you're His child. By nature, you have His Spirit. By nature, He indwells you. Now, I'm not talking about being filled with the Spirit. Okay, I'm saying this is the unction of the Spirit, which all believers have. And you need to know that it is just as natural on the spiritual side. I'm speaking about natural things, spiritually speaking. It is normal and natural for you to hear God's voice. Just accept that His Spirit is there in you and He will lead you. And stay in your Word so that you will always know that the Word and the Spirit, they are agree. Now, let's go back over some other things that I, I don't want to share with you. Okay. It says in that same 27, the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And as he has taught you, abide in him. This is the thing that is so important. Jesus says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Well, that ties into this verse. Now, understand the difference in the time zones or, for lack of a better word, uh, dispensations. You're right in this in-between cusp where Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet when he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. And then look at John, which is after the resurrection and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, 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 then was brought forth. This is saying, as you have, as he has taught you, you shall abide in you. In other words, he lives in you now to teach you abide in him. Jesus says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you shall ask what you will. What brings you that confidence for answered prayer? Abiding 
under the anointing, under the unction, under the witness of the Spirit. It breeds confidence because it's God's Holy Spirit working with your spirit, bringing you that unction, leading you and guiding you into all truth. Now look at this as we close. This says, and now little children abide in him that when ye shall appear, we may have confidence and be not ashamed before him at his coming. Now, a brief thing, because I know that we have different camps, uh, Arminius camps, and we have Calvinist camps that may differ on eternal security and things of that nature. Let's lay that aside for just a second. If you are walking in the anointing, if you are abiding in the anointing, you will have to worry about whether you're saved or not, because everything you are doing, you're being led. God is only really saying in this passage, as you have received an anointing, if you haven't received it, then we got other problems. But if you have received Jesus Christ, you have the anointing, abide in that anointing, abide in him, and you will have confidence and not be ashamed at the second coming of Jesus or when you go to meet the Lord, if you leave, leave this life. So the confidence comes as we abide in the unction. Well, I sure hope that this has been a blessing to you. And Sultan and I are asking you to pray for us as we work on the studio. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for all of those who support us. We don't receive any financial blessing of, from the video ministry. It's not that we don't want to anything like that. God just hasn't moved in that direction at, at this time. But we want to say thank you for all of you who pray for us. Continue to pray for us that God will send this ministry into all parts of the world. We're in 132 nations and counting, and we're asking the Lord to give us new opportunities. God bless you, and I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.